over the weekend was looking into some things and um, you know, I've been sounding like a bear. You know, the bear and the bull, and the bear is down on the market, the bull is optimistic about the market, and um, people say, you've been sounding like a bear. I don't mean to be. I'm just a weatherman. I'm looking at the charts, and if it says rain, I say rain. If it says tornado, I say tornado. And if it says hurricane, I say get out of town until the storm's passed. But that's what I've been seeing it. So I, I am at heart a bull at heart. I am an optimist. I believe entrepreneurs are the solution to so many things in America, and I believe we can do it. So that's where I live. But what I've been seeing is a lot of stats that are saying rain is coming, and right now some of the rain is here. So about the mortgage and real estate market over the past year, I want to take you through something today that I think is a really shocking stat. But first, let's do the building blocks of what has been going on. Uh, because we've been talking about this on the yeah, on nonstop. PBD I mean, podcast, this right? This has been a conversation for the last couple of years, so there's no surprise here on our end, at least. Exactly. So first of all, we know that printing a bunch of money, all those stimulus checks, people don't know, that causes asset inflation. What's asset inflation? Cars cost more. Some of you saw that. Even used cars cost more. And never mind, what was the part they were always trying to get that was a shortage? Semiconductors. Chips, that's yeah. right. Yeah, a few chips. Chips control your air conditioning, your GPS, everything. Everything else. So there was all of that. That had nothing to do with it. That was just a shortage that was also causing problems with during COVID and shipping parts. The underlying asset, cars were going up. Real estate was going up. So the printing money caused that. So the first issue we have in the building blocks was housing prices went up like 25 to 40% all across the USA. Yep. If, down here in South Florida. We're down here at Fort even, Lauderdale. Even crazier. Even crazier. Completely. And so suddenly people couldn't afford homes. And the market started slowing 2022 a little bit for sales. And then what happened beginning of 2022? All of a sudden, we had interest rates. And interest rates were under 3%. In other words, you and I were going down to Wells Fargo and everything to get ourselves a loan for the house. And we were getting 2.75, 3.25, 3.5, depending on our credit. And that was the beginning of 2022 in January. And then the Fed went crazy, right? They went ballistic. Yeah, exactly. Out of control, like, like a kid with a credit card with no limit. That's exactly right. And every six weeks, the Fed was quarter point, quarter point, quarter point until interest rates had doubled to 7% in October of 2022. Now, that's only about six months ago. Mm -hmm. And right now, how many, what was that? How many times in a row the Fed raised rates? It's like 10 times in a row? 10, 10 times in a row the Fed raised rates. So everybody's waiting. Interest rates going down, they're going to stay flat. The Fed, Jerome Powell, raised it again. Well, what did that do? That's what lifted up everything that was going on. So now you had homes more expensive for people trying to buy them. And then when they went to the bank, the mortgage was gonna, the payment was gonna be higher because now interest rates were at seven, if they could even still get qualified, right? Or they had to go, they could only afford a $500,000 house. Now that house is 650. They can't afford that. Now they gotta go find something for 500, but now they can't afford that because now the interest rate's up, the payment's gonna be higher. And now they have to find a place for 450 and they're, Finding small houses or things, guess what? The whole market slows down. You see what I just described there? That is a factual analysis of what happened to the average American running through this. So the market slows. And so everybody's asking, are the rates going to drop? Where are they going to go? Well, the Fed forecast, and there's a whole bunch of these acronyms that you hear all the time. If you read the Wall Street Journal, you'll see them all the time. And you'll, you can go to all sorts of news stories, you'll be reading something, all of a sudden there's Ackerman. And one of the things that is there is SOFR, Secured Overnight Financing Rate Data. All that means is, what are the averages looking like? What is the weather forecast for interest rates? And there's two to look at. One is the market does what's called betting on futures. So the market, you can tell what the market thinks is going to happen to interest rates, and then you have a Fed forecast. And I think we have a chart on that. And so, Angel, we got the, the chart here, the black line and the yellow line. Let's talk a little about these lines and let's show them to them. So if you're watching at, at, at home or you're driving in a car, I'll, drive, I'll describe this for you. And if you can see it, follow along. The black dotted line is what the Fed believes is where we're going. And what you can see is 2023, 
you can see it thinks it's going to be flat. And then in January of 2024, um, we are going to see rates going down and finally get back to 3% at the end of 25. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're sitting here almost halfway through 23, and you're saying flat for a while and then dropping down, getting to 3% by the end of 25. That's not good news. Now, the market thinks that that was going to be a little bit more aggressive. As a matter of fact, the market is worried that here in June, that it's not a done deal next week that the Fed will not raise interest rates, that there might be a quarter point raise or maybe one in July before it goes down. So the market was thinking that the Fed would come down a little bit quicker and matter of fact, a pretty big drop at the beginning of 24. Well, now the Fed forecast thinks, no, I don't think so. Now, why do they think that? Because they're getting bad news. They're seeing wages are up. Now, to the Fed trying to control inflation, Wages go up mean inflation is not calming down. And the Fed wants to get inflation back for 2%. So all the things that you and I buy, food, energy, heating oil in the Northeast, a lot of electricity in Phoenix for your air conditioners, that all that kind of calms down so that it's less expensive to live. And so we've got everyone here thinks it's going to be two years till we get the interest rates back down to where they were a year and three months ago at the beginning of 22, that it's going to be two years till they get back there. And when you listen to the Fed and you see those, and we've been making fun of Jerome Powell, right? Yeah, he's, he's I've gotten... I'm telling my, tell my little a, story about him. About the cheerleaders? Yeah, the U.S. economy is a cheerleader. And every time Jerome Powell heads upstairs and bangs the cheerleader, he is pounding the economy. Well, what he's trying to pound is inflation, but it also ends up having another effect on your mortgages, credit card interest rates, everything else. And they say, well, it's a necessary evil to get all these things back into balance. Okay, so I built that up for you to explain why the housing and the mortgage industry is having such a hard time. Houses are still expensive, mortgage rates are still high, yep. and it's making the whole market slow. And Along comes not so shocking news. You ready for this? Consumer bankruptcies are suddenly up. Um, we were looking at year over year stats. Like year over year, what was it? Yeah. It's like 20%. Some 20%. Personal bankruptcies are up 20% year over year. Not 20% of Americans declaring bankruptcies. The number of bankruptcies from a year ago to now is up 20%. We also saw that total credit cards in this country have hit $1 trillion of balances. In the middle of COVID, after the stimulus checks were out, it was only 650, only 650 to $700 billion. All those things come together and we suddenly have the upswing of home prices, upswing of mortgage interest rates, and this crazy stat. I set this whole thing up to bring this to you. The demand survey came out, and for the people that bought a home in 2022 or the first quarter of 2023, just, we just finished first quarter, 62% of those buyers, at least one payment was either missed or they had to use savings account. In other words, their paycheck and what they were earning and what that cost them to live was not enough. They had to dip into savings to make up the gap and make the mortgage payment, which is usually the largest payment that they have in, in their budget. Or, ready for this, they actually use the credit card cash advance or convenience checks that they send you with the credit card. You know, they send you like yeah. those three emergency checks. Yep. You could just write State Farm on it and pay your insurance if you had to. Like if you're unemployed for a while and you had to find a way to do that. But 62% of the people that bought houses in 2002 and first quarter 2023, 2022, 2023, they actually had to do that for one payment so far because inflation is pinching them and they were probably not prepared for the property tax rates and other things. Now, banks should be evaluating you before they give you the mortgage, but there were mortgage brokers <clears throat> that were pushing qualifications to the edge because they had to do something. You know what they had to do? They had to get homes for their clients. Yeah. 
and they had to eat. Exactly. Because if they didn't, if they didn't sell a mortgage, they don't eat. That's how they make money. And a lot of that went down, so they weren't making as much money. So what ends up with this is scary. Yeah. Bankruptcy's up twenty percent, sixty-two percent. So if you're out there and you're having trouble, God bless you. I hope you can surf this out. But now is a time to be very conservative and to be in control. Now we like to talk to a lot of small business owners, and we like to, because a lot of you are watching. You know, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, leaders around. You know, you're, you're, you're watching all this. And now is the time to live as conservative as you can. And that's what's necessary. We need people to, um, you know, for your own benefit, just to take it easy. And if you're running a business, keep the expenditures down, but be opportunistic about your business. You may be able to pick up business from somebody across town that's having a tougher time than you and absorb that. You may be able to grow. And the way you do it, just be conservative and prepared in everything you do because in your market, you may be the last man standing, um, like in your town, unfortunately. And we don't wish hardship on people, but like I say, the weather says it's going to rain, and if you've got a rain jacket and common sense, you're going to do better than others.